Sometimes you conquer a storm that makes you the worst place in the world to be. Sometimes the sun comes over one of your ridges and lights up the world in an indescribable way. And I feel like I'm in heaven. I can't comprehend your age, permanence, nor power, but I try to. For me, to become a part of your landscape, I had to reject what felt comfortable. You will always be bigger and better than me, so I rise to your challenge. You know, a lot of things have to line up, um, a lot of things out of your control, right? The weather, the snow conditions, the avalanche danger. And this was, uh, this was a bit of a funky year. It wasn't uh, the, the most stable, best year ever. When you think of Colorado, you think of the 14ers. Um, and that's because they're the, they're the highest mountains, but the 13,000 foot peaks are very often overlooked. <sighs> you are the range that raised me, so I embarked on this project to ski all the 13,000 foot peaks in the Elks because I wanted to get to know you better than anyone had before. For me, it felt like turning left off a trail where no one had turned left before. All in search of lesser known lines, all dramatic and some previously untouched. So I shouldn't really have to tell you that these, that these Elk Mountains are really intense, but Listen up, they're freaking intense. And the 13ers are more intense than the 14ers. Sorry to say it, but they're more remote. They're in farther out places. I could go do two 14ers right now within 30 minutes. But to get to the 13er, gotta go through this shit. Yeah, more intense. <laughs> The Elk Range is home to 52 13,000 foot summits and seven 14,000 foot summits. A great majority of which are rugged, remote, and extremely steep. That's what makes the Elks, in my opinion, the most challenging range in the Colorado Rockies. My journey to ski all of these peaks began way before embarking on the climbing and skiing itself. I'd been planning this since December, just like scouring maps, scouring Fat Map, scouring Caltopo, um, and also looking at like paper maps that I had, just really trying to get a lay of the land and going out into the backcountry as much as possible in order to kind of scope lines and figure things out because many people haven't skied these lines. Um, nobody has ever skied all of them, which means that most of them do not have reports written about winter ascent and descent routes. I had to map and find my own way for more than 40 of them, which drew me even closer in, exploring without the feedback or voices of visitors who came before me. I spent months mapping, planning, and trying to anticipate the snowpack, but the pieces only really fell into place when I was standing atop the first summits. Taking Beta, Siberia East looks good. Seems like you can finish the X Kular on Hagerman. Um, can't see Bellevue too well. Thunder Pyramid, West Face is in for sure. I set out on my journey on March 29th to ski my first peak. I started with some of the peaks that I was more familiar with and that weren't the most technically challenging nor the most remote. 
This is where the real planning started. Summiting the first 10 peaks was crucial, as it gave me a deeper vision into the Elks. And I've gotten eight for eight 13 ers that I've skied off the summit of in the Elks range. Um, they're over 50, so yeah, we're gonna keep trucking along. I was entirely unaware whether it was possible to ski some of the peaks, let alone ski all 52 in one short Colorado spring mountaineering ski season. Doing this project on a, on a low snow year just adds a lot more mixed climbing, which is inherently more challenging than when you're just climbing snow. And so, <clears throat> this is definitely a pretty challenging year to do it just because our snowpack isn't that, isn't that deep. We're at 13,200 feet and having to turn around because the snow is breaking through and I can touch rock. Um, and I'm on about a 50 degree slope, so that is definitely not safe. There were many variables that had to line up in order to have success. The snow needed to stay, it needed to be stable, my body needed to stay strong, and my mental fortitude for waking up at two in the morning every single day needed to remain unwavering. I think for two months straight, I was waking up at uh, waking up every day from I, either one o'clock to four o'clock a.m. and that in and of itself is a really hard thing to do let alone going let alone like having to go climb a mountain afterwards oh. <sighs> another 3 a.m. start you know it's pretty okay when you do like one or or two back to back but every day, every day for two months it, it's a lot <clears throat> The sweat freezing on your body, the three hours of sleep the night before, the craving for food, the relentless climb that never ends. <coughs> All those feelings are so worth it. Just connecting intimately with a place. Feeling small, but feeling so unique. So amazing. Entertaining thoughts of not finishing was something that I worked hard not to do. If you're scared to fail, you'll never even try. Instead of focusing on the entire daunting objective, it helped for my mindset to be centered around overcoming each individual challenge and indulging in the beautiful moments when they came as much as possible. There were many challenges and many magical moments. That balance is what made the process so wonderful. Wow, it is freaking amazing up here. Oh my god, I'm so humbled and blown away and Teokali is peeking out. Oh, wow, a beautiful part of the Elks, a beautiful part of the Elks. Oh, I love it. Yeah, the mountains definitely have my spirit and going out into them every day just lets me feel 100, yeah, it lets me be myself and I can feel the most me. All right, almost to the top of objective number two for the day, unnamed peak. Still thinking of a name for it. Keep going to the top, you lazy bum. This would be a sweet toboggan run now. So it's two in the morning. I'm about to go head up to Maroon Lake on my snowmobile. I'm having pasta from last night because I didn't really want to make anything else, but we're gonna go up to Moon Lake and then onward to Crater. 
camp up there for a few days and ski about five peaks. One of which is definitely a crux of the project, Thunder Pyramid. Um, and another peak that is just to the south of it, Lightning Pyramid, is is a crux as well. So we're gonna try to knock out those two and yeah, hopefully I'm not eating pasta for breakfast when I'm when I'm doing it. Moments of self-doubt, however, did arise. Once the more technical and challenging first descents began to loom on my mental horizon, I questioned my preparedness. The peaks that came to mind were Lightning Pyramid, Precarious Peak, and the Sleeping Sexton. Lightning had evaded me once, and I worried about whether conditions would ever allow for a safe descent. Lightning shares the same challenges that the famous Landry Line on Pyramid Peak has with its skiable faces being extremely steep and lasting for roughly 3,000 feet to the basin below. No falling or mistakes allowed. There, there was one time when I felt scared, and that was the first time my friend Cam and I went to do Lightning Pyramid, and we were just we were going up the northeast face, and it was just too warm. Um, and I just, yeah, I don't know, I didn't feel good about the snow. It felt like a wet slide was gonna happen or it didn't feel like a wet slide was gonna happen, it just felt like it could happen in a little while. And I, I don't know, that was probably like in the second week of doing all the 13ers and Lightning is one of the hardest peaks to climb in all of Colorado. So we like called it quits about 300 feet from the summit. When I returned to ski the west face of Thunder Pyramid, also on the Pyramid Ridgeline, I successfully reached the summit and skied the face down to the basin. Upon embarking that day, I held the ideal in mind of skiing the northwest face to the west Kular of lightning thereafter. The clouds stayed around and concern of warming snow from the bright sun faded away. I skied both Thunder and Lightning in that same day. Two 2,500 foot vertical lines right next to each other, a significant technical challenge. I named my first descent on Lightning Pyramid, the Bolt.
I'm in my fort. Nice and safe in my fort. Away from the scary steep stuff. Nah, it's not scary, it's just fun. But the fort's kind of fun too. We don't have to hurry because it's west and we early. So we need a little sun, you know? So we play in fort in the meantime. <gasps> it's a wee bit windy up here. We might start heading down. Maybe go back to our, to our little fort and hang out there for a little while while the sun comes over here. Woo! Yeah! By this point, you had tested me with some of your most challenging peaks. My eyes froze shut in your unforgiving winds. I shook at the top of your steepest faces, and I also started to know you very deeply. My respect for you only grew. By then, I knew I had it. As I was forced to pick up my momentum in the last 20 days of the project, I started to link together summits playing with the aspects as the sun moved across the sky to time my descents with the warming snow. The struggle and harshness that came with the mountains transformed into a flow, moving up faces along ridge lines with total concentration and unbroken connection, what amounted to some crazy, beautiful, epic days. Yeah, so my name is Michael Worth, and I just skied 52 of the 13,000 foot peaks in the Elks Range, all 52 of them, and I did it in 60 days. Nobody has ever, ever skied the 13ers in the Elks Range before, all of them, and so I'm the first person to do it, and I'm pretty happy about how quickly I did it. It was a big challenge um, from an endurance and technical perspective, but Oh, feels so good. Feels so, so good. Yeah, I also skied the 714ers in the Elks. <laughs> what Michael pulled off is, is really extraordinary. There's more to the mountains than I or anyone could understand. And that's what's beautiful. You can totally immerse yourself within them and still never know all of their secrets. They are unconquerable. And it is a selfless sense of wonder that carries you through. To really appreciate like how many peaks and the, the diversity of those peaks and how to, how you did all this in such a short period of time. Uh, there, there are a lot of good ski mountaineers out there that probably won't fully grasp it right away. good things about having suspenders after you do an 11,000 foot mountaineering day when you lose a couple inches off your waist because you just burned 7,000 calories the pants don't fall off <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, hey there. Your bike's swaying pretty hard. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> it's no big deal. It moves more when I'm biking. No, no, yes! <laughs> How's my mustache? Covered with snot? Of course, of course it is. It's not beautiful skiing the whole way down. But it's fun. Part of the adventure. This quail up here, is just taking the trail with me. And he's scared I'm gonna eat him. So he's showing me his butt feathers. Like, <laughs> dude, save yourself. Get off the trail. I'm a hungry guy.